Previously on the Adventure Zone, and you're being crushed by the shattered earth, and you hear an anguished scream come from something massive and furious. Well, you'll have to do much better than that, loves. And then you wake up. Imminent destruction comes from below. Turn your eyes to the quarry. You're not ready to face what awaits you there, but you must know its face. And then the light Man, comes I back. I was going to go to the quarry anyway. Um, like, what, a, what a ripoff. Cassidy is holding what looks like a giant cluster of green grapes that is attached to a long wire with a plunger. You are burned, and you are crushed, and you are dead. And you wake up again. The bad no news diamonds. is shit. you do not have 50 diamonds. Okay, well, that answers that, huh? I'm going to delete the YouTube video I was making about how to do an infinite diamond glitch in the adventure <laughs> zone. <laughs> wow, this arc is going to wreck the boys' KD ratio. Let's hope they can break the cycle and escape from the adventure zone. loop you did a bunch of dumb shit and learned that you can't take things with you through the loops you were told to go to the quarry merle you spied on cassidy and sort of found a way into the quarry because she had some some sort of explosives stashed down there and yeah i think that anything else happened i forgot you made some new friends a lot of fun memories were had Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think everybody had a great time. I, I, I wish I had pictures, but at least I have my memories. Um, mm-hmm. so you wake. Look at this photograph. <laughs> <laughs> it's me getting blown up again. Um, I lost the photograph. <laughs> <laughs> this thing doesn't work like that. <laughs> well, that song's a paradox. Yeah, shit. A song Amazing. paradox. Song paradox. And a parody. I love Weird Al Yankovic song paradoxes. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, you 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 uh, have woken up in front of refuge again, and now, I know that we did the loop last time. Yeah, so with, so with, like but a- I want to try something different. Okay, yeah, what you got? Oh. All right, fellas, I have. Wait, that's Merle's voice, fellas. I have an idea. Go with me on this one. I charge right up to Roswell, and I say, "Your name is Roswell. We're visitors from outside the dome. You haven't had visitors in a long time. Is that correct?" Yeah, that's right. Okay. There's a statue in the center of town of three people, the visitor, Jack, and June. Jack and June died in the quarry. The name of your sheriff is Isaac. He's the elder. He lives in a big house at the end of the road. Who are you? How are you doing this? There's a witch in the woods named Paloma. There's a woman right now in your jail named Cassidy. And there's a dwarf woman who works at the bank named Brockton. Is that correct? Okay, okay, yes, I get it. What, what, who are you? What are you doing here? How do you know this? This is not our first time here. We seem to be stuck in some kind of loop. At noon today, something terrible happens. And the only way we can stop it from happening is if you come with us to the quarry. I think this is going to take, uh, uh, everything that you're saying to Roswell right now is absolutely true. And they're pretty, freaked out they seem um i need you to roll a not bluff because it's it's certainly not bluff maybe di- di- diplomacy i need to f- brush up on the skills because i don't really know the charisma skills very well but what would the what would be the right sort of charisma roll here uh is there a bullshit line well, it's not bullshit it's the thing like, this is, it's, it's true. true it's just like you're trying to convince persuasion persuasion, persuasion would be it yeah yeah well that fell off the table 19 plus one, that's a 20. And I'm uh, rustically hospitable. Yeah, I would have given you advantage on that too, um, just because it's a good play. But um, yeah, uh, okay, Roswell says, uh, okay, I don't. What are your names? I'm Not Magnus. Too. Yeah, Magnus. Merle! Yeah, that's, yeah. And you said something horrible happens at noon. Is there anything else you can tell me about the next hour? Yes. So something horrible happens at 11 30, too. There's going to be a bank robbery shortly before then. Um, and you're going to go inside and you're going to fight the guys. But if you don't come out, the whole bank is going to collapse on you in fire. 
Fighting the guys is a fool's errand. Don't do it. Cassidy escapes during an earthquake from the jail cell. She goes to the quarry and attempts to blow something up in the quarry, and that's where the bad stuff happens. Okay, it's- so what... what, what oh, and your hell on furniture. I knew that already. I... Uh, okay, I believe you. Obviously, you know a lot about this town. Obviously, you know a lot about what's going on, but I'm... My duty is to protect the town. I can't just go off with you if there's about to be a bank robbery. Okay. What can I you mean, tell us about it. the What can you tell us about the quarry? Um, nobody's been in there in in uh, quite a while. There was a, a rock slide, and it's it's all closed off. Uh, we uh, operations slowed almost to to a halt, and then um, w- there was a there was a disaster uh, down there uh, 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 about a few weeks ago, about six weeks ago, and uh, a, a few miners died. Uh, Cassidy was the only one that made it out, and um, a, and so f- from that point on, just no- nobody's gone inside since then. I have a question. What? What? If the diamond mine dried up a while ago, why were there miners in the mine? You know, they're thirsty. I think maybe there's more secret diamonds looking for a second vein. Hmm. Gotcha. All right, you go. You keep an eye out on the bank. Okay. Whatever you do, don't stay and get everybody out. Don't okay. worry about fighting the guys. Your okay. safety is more important. The town needs you. Remember that. Okay. Uh, thank you. Go, go. Just go, 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 okay. go, go. And uh, Roswell takes off running uh, towards the the center of town and kind of takes up like a defensive position. So I, I think you probably did that faster than you did the last sort of convincing of Roswell. So let's say it's like 11.05 right now. And then just like any time in future loops, you can just do this that's our checkpoint yeah right? sure that's our save point yeah um so okay. you you're going to the quarry yes okay um, well hold on let me i won't decide boys do you feel good about that move it seems to be the best place for us to sort of explore right now it's what paloma said right when we went and talked to her that yeah, she paloma, said there was something paloma said that there was something you need to see in the quarry even though you're not sort of ready <clears throat> to face it and Carrie was messing around with some blow up juice. Cassidy. Uh, Cassidy, yeah. Yeah, Cassidy, yeah. yeah Carrie Carrie was messing with explosives probably wherever she is somewhere. <laughs> um okay, yeah, you you go to the quarry, you go to that same locked gate that you were at before, um, Merle, and even though uh Roswell's kind of in the center of town and sees you like get through it, either by picking it or climbing it. Magnus, maybe you want to pick it, because it'll be the first time that you pick a lock and Yeah, you know what? I do. Okay. Um, that'll be nice. Sure, go ahead and roll, uh, I think, what would that be? Thie- thie- how do Thieves you- tools. Thieves tools, yeah. And I roll the 14, and I'm like You get plus 10, it's insane, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, you pop that gate open, and Roswell sees you do this, but it's just like, gives you a thumbs up, and like waves you, just go, 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 go. Um, and you make it down that same winding ramp that um, Merle, you pursued Cassidy down in the last loop, and you were at the bottom of this quarry, and if you look at the map, like it's it's a pretty wide open space, um, coming off the ramp to the north, you see that caved-in entrance, um, and then otherwise you're just kind of surrounded by um, flat earth. Uh, to your right, um, the only sort of thing of, of notice uh, against the wall, sort of the, the, the sheer wall that leads back up into town, uh, it, you, you see a patch of uh, bushes, um, and that's pretty much all that you see down here. Um, but the, the entrance is caved in, uh, there's just there's a ton of rocks sort of in there, and that that is where Cassidy deployed the explosives in the last loop. Ditto. I'm gonna investigate the bushes. Okay, I guess since you brought them up. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, when people ask me like what my apartment's like, I'm no, like, yeah, well, it's, it's great, but there's these bushes outside. It's, che- it's Chekhov's bush. Yeah. <laughs> Can we please not talk about Chekhov's bush? He's very self conscious about it. I'm just saying. I listen. I do my best. <laughs> Just, like, it's untamable <laughs> wild land. I just, I just don't think you're putting all it in the enough. shaving, <laughs> all the trimming. <laughs> oh, Riftoka, Oslaka, uh, Pitrota. Okay, w- these are the names of my pubic hair. <laughs> Let me start again. <laughs> Konroska, <laughs> little Peter. Um, uh, roll Sneaky that. Day. Roll that investigation check before I die. Uh, it's 15, uh, yeah, 15 plus nothing. Okay. Um, Taco, Merle, you want to check it out? Check, yeah. th- scoop this bush? <laughs> that was my favorite 80s comedy. <laughs> scope that bush. I got a 19. 
Well, Pop, that's a four for you, that's old buddy. That's a four. That's a stinker. Um, okay. You're looking the wrong way, Merle. Over so, here. Magnus, with that 15, you see a few instruments tucked away inside of Chekhov's bush. You find a shovel, presumably the one that uh, Cassidy used on Merle uh, in the last episode. Uh, there is a mattock, like a like a pickaxe, uh, pickaxe with a broad uh, side to it, and a headlamp um, tucked away inside of this bush. And Taco, with your nineteen, you see those items, but you also notice that the dirt, kind of immediately underneath the the that bush, has uh, it's it's like uh, it's been disrupted. It's uh, it looks like somebody has buried something here. I grab the headlamp. It seems useful. Yeah, because I don't think you have special magic eyes. I don't. I got magic eyes. I can see in the. Should I write down temporary headlamp? Yeah, I mean that headlamp. Yeah. What's there again? Uh, There's like a pickaxe situation. There's a shovel, and then the dirt has been disrupted underneath the underneath the 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 bush. I'll grab the shovel. Okay. I'll take the pickaxe. Okay, everybody gets a little treat. (laughs) Bonus. Gotta check out that dirt, or our listeners. I'm gonna die. Insane. Yeah, I'm going to dig in there with my shovel, my new shovel. How hard would you say you bury that bad boy in there? Uh, Like an inch and a half. And I'm like, oh, oh, the labor. (laughs) Oh, the pain. Oh, I see. I see. see. You're having a hard time with it just because you don't want to work very hard. Yes, these beautiful hands. I, my, my beautiful okay, hands. I, I, I can take a hint. I got it. I oh sit down God. and start digging with my hands. What a relief. Uh, <laughs> okay, I, I cast healing on, on Thank poor Taco. You. Oh, what a relief. <laughs> 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 um, okay, by, by uh, avoiding digging with much pressure and digging with your hands, uh, you safely uh, exhume a cluster bomb. Which is that that thing that you saw uh, Cassidy carrying in the last episode? Um, there's probably about 15 of these things. They're about tennis ball size, and they're all sort of connected and wired into a central wire, which connects to a plunger. Um, and uh, now you have that in your possession as well. Sweet. Okay, so we weren't with Merle, so I'm going to ask this like of Griffin, which you can handle however you want to, describing it through Merle's perspective when he saw. Cassidy setting everything off. Did that seem connected to the world tearing apart, or no, were they separate no. events? They were separate events. Before she detonated it, um, the the rocks got blown outward by some sort of force inside the quarry. Got it. You guys want to like blow this up? No. What? No. Like <laughs> where the cave in is. Like we have nowhere else to go if we don't, you know, blow it up and get in there. So we're done investigating the dirt. Yeah, there's nothing left in the yeah. in the dirt. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. No, you, on this time, you, you keep digging and you find the magic rod of uh, the. Of Todd. What you say it's, it? It's canon. You, you, no, you don't find anything in there. The, <laughs> the rod magic rod Todd. of the magic rod of Eternal Todd. You know what? Let's play it safe. I'm just gonna go in. Um, I pull out the hole thrower. Okay. Ooh. And I will tell you what kind of size hole we got going on here. Let me get my my D10 popping. Okay, this is a five foot deep and wide hole. Okay, um, I'm trying to imagine. So, so this is many rocks, right? That are all kind of piled up. So, um, uh, many rocks are actually called pebbles, Griffin. Good job. <laughs> okay, um, we'll say you pointed this at the sort of biggest biggest rock in the bunch. And you launch this uh, five foot deep and wide hole, uh, and uh, you can you, you basically pierce right through this big rock, um, but you can't really see much of anything in there except well, I guess you have that headlamp. I click um, it on. Yeah, yeah. Looking in there, you just see sort of a, a a cavern moving inwards, and I can see in the dark. So okay, yeah, uh, yeah. You just kind of see a cavern moving inwards. Um, but go. yeah, you've 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 managed to find I would say maybe a safer way into. We this hole. solved your stone puzzle. Okay. Plus, we kept the bomb. Yeah, you're going to keep that bomb with you? Yeah. It is. I, I will say this. It is a bomb, so be careful. Okay. okay. No, I put it in a different pocket than Steven. Okay. Yeah, no, that'll... Yeah, you have thick lead pants that will contain <laughs> the, the blast to a single leg. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, you, you move into this quarry um, through the hole. I mean, a five-foot hole is easily big enough to, for you to move through. 
um, and uh, climb in. And um, as you you move in, the uh, cavern that you sort of uh, opened up is uh, fairly short before it opens up into a room. And this room um, essentially looks like the like entry room or like the it, it maybe doubles as the break room for this diamond mine. There is in one corner there is a sink. And an ice box. There are uh, a, like three or four tables, like round tables with some chairs around them. A few of the chairs are upended. Um, right next to the entrance that you just walked in through is a little time card station. Like you can punch your card, and there's a there's about uh, there's about fifteen cards tucked away in there. Um, on the far side of the room, opposite you, is a big heavy metal door, uh, almost like a vault like door, and and. It is kind of similar to the doors that were in the Wave Echo Cave uh, mine. Like, these are uh, industrial strength big doors. Uh, And uh, to your right, past the uh, tables and chairs, uh, are uh, 26 lockers. And these lockers are stacked up in two rows of three, uh, or, or two rows of 13. And each of them has a little piece of tape. Uh, that has uh, crudely sort of marked down whose lockers they are. And uh, you assume that these are former mine employees. And if you will refer to Skype, I will now send you the list of names that are on these lockers. Griffin, this just says butts, 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 butts. No, Travis, it doesn't. I wish you could (laughs) stop lying to try and embarrass me. Mine says butt, just butts over and over again. Okay, I'm going to try to figure out how to get dad to... Hold on. I'll read the names just real quick, just burn them right down um, for our listeners. There's Lawrence, Abernathy, Cassidy, Ulrich, Farnsworth, Xavier, Vanessa, Randall, Perkins, Williams, Galding, Yael, Harlan, Dana, Jerry, Barnes, Emmerich, Zelda, Morrison, Isaac, Osha, Keith, Quincy. Uh, One label that has been kind of scratched off and is unreadable. Uh, Terrence and Neal. Are those all listeners? No, that would be crazy. Maybe, uh, though. We don't have that many listeners. <laughs> <laughs> I'm checking out that scratched off label one. Okay. Yeah, it's just, it, it just looks like all the other ones. The, the, the lockers are in fine shape. It's just the, the label is... No, like I'm opening it. Oh, okay. You, I'm uh, not just like looking at it like a dummy. Yeah, these, are, these lockers don't have any kind of like a padlock or dial on them or anything like that. They're, they're just... Um, they're just labeled, and then there's like a little lever that pops them open. Uh, okay, I'm doing I'm to check. I'm Go doing ahead. that kind of thing where like I open it, but I like lean away from the opening. You know what I mean? Okay. It's like bugs fly out or something. Uh, you pull on the lever to this locker, and all three of you hear a horrible sound that lasts like a split second, and it's like uh, the sound is like, <laughs> and it was actually the sound of this room more or less exploding. What? And all three of you have died. Ah, wow. son of a bitch. Damn. And you're back in that white space and the 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 the, the old woman the, the old woman in this white space <laughs> She's like good job for <laughs> She just looks she doesn't actually say anything to you this time. Um when you actually like come into the white space this time, she's um she looks like she's like catching her breath. She looks like kind of tired. And then you're back in front of Roswell. Okay, so can we just jump back to yeah, where we were? Yeah, in the were? interest of time, we can just fast forward because you've done a lot of things to sort of get you to where you need to be. You're I back in this say, you're back in this room and I've just described it again. My concern, Justin and Dad, is that this woman is through effort allowing us to loop and it's possible we may have finite attempts or we need to space some time between attempts. Well, let's find out. Rica. Yeah. No. How about on. if you don't blow the shit out of us? To be fair, I said I leaned away. <laughs> hey, can, I don't know I, what Griffin wants from me. Can I ask a question <laughs> that I've literally never asked the three of you in the the whole time that we've been running this game? Yeah. yeah. Um. How do you? How does your? How do Taco Merle and Magnus like feel? Because like we're we're having a lot of fun here with our Groundhog's Day shenanigans, but now they've died three times, and it probably hasn't been great. You know, Griffin, I'm glad you asked. I think for Magnus, it's a matter of, like, this is how he would live his life anyways. Yeah. And so I would say he feels emboldened Yeah, by being able to rush in, fuck up, and then rush in again. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. 
Okay. Uh, Merle's not a fan. <laughs> okay, yeah, I figured as no, much. Not a, not a fan. A um, little chafed and a little gassy from the whole thing. How's Taco feel? I very How much want feel? to know. Uh, just another day at the office, baby. <laughs> okay. Um, this, uh, I would assume it would be very disorienting, I feel like. Yeah. Dying like that and then not dying. Okay, what do you, what do you guys want to do here? This, I, uh, I would, you, you got some, I'll, I'll tell it to you straight. You got some puzzles coming up. I have detect traps. Okay. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just, can you constantly do that? I mean, it probably won't be as good as Travis's method of detecting traps, which is to say leaning away from I them. leaned away! But- <laughs> I don't know! What do you want from me? <laughs> uh, go ahead and uh, do your magic. Okay. Now I can't find it. <laughs> detect, detect traps. Do you have a card called detect, detect traps? I thought I did. I just saw a card that said you detect leaner. traps, and now I cast. I can't find. I I cast detect traps. Okay, that's not a spell. So it it is. You just shout detect traps into the <laughs> void. No, it is a spell. It is a spell. What did you think you saw? I saw detect there's traps. Detect, there's detect magic. Oh, there's something about traps. Find traps. Find okay. traps. Thank you. There we go. Find traps. You sense the presence of any trap within range that is within line of sight. These cards, the print is so small. Okay, Um, here's what I can tell you about that. First of all, the with with detect traps, you can tell that the door is trapped if you try to open it um, before you do something else. Um, it will activate the trap. Um, you can also tell that you and you can't tell specifically which ones, but you can tell that sixteen of these lockers have mechanisms in them that will just set off the trap instantly. Um, the others have. Uh, the the others are still kind of trapped, um, but uh, in a different way where they have to be set off in sequence. Do, could I look at the rack of time cards and see if there's one with Cassidy's name on it? Yeah, sure. Uh, there there is. Cassidy has one in there. How many did hey, I say when there was were? The last time that Cassidy checked in. So the last time Cassidy checked in was six weeks when ago. She brained me with a shovel. No, 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 no it was no. it was six weeks ago. Um, okay. and wait, is uh, it six weeks? Okay, is the date on our time card six weeks prior from, to what we understand today's date to be? Yes, um, okay. it was the date of this accident that Roswell mentioned earlier. And okay. sure enough, I forget how many people I said died in the thing, but um, there are four other time cards with the same punch in date, and none of them, including Cassidy, have a punch out date. Um, the rest of the cards kind of just like taper off ah. like going going back um through through the months where people just like kind of quit working here um Emmerich stopped working here like a few months ago uh, morrison is in here about a few months ago quit working here isaac uh is in there quit working here even like much much longer ago hasn't worked here for a while but their time card is still uh Griffin, in the machine. Yo. you clever bastard all of these names there's 26 of them they all start with the letter of the alphabet right so there's something about the puzzle. I don't know if it's that we need to trip the vowels in order or we need to spell out a word. But if 16 of them are trapped, that means there's 10 that need opened in a certain order. Well, what are the four names on the cards that were the most recent ones? Um, let's say Vanessa. Let's say Williams. Let's say Jerry and Quincy. I'm picking and those also, completely. I'm picking those completely at random now, though. That and also Cassidy and Cassidy. Yeah, those are the highest scoring tiles in Scrabble. Maybe that's that. <laughs> Can we spell Quijibo? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I literally just picked those names at random. That's that has nothing to do with the solution. Or you're telling us? You no, just I, pr- I, I those promise. Names. I'm, t- I'm also just sort of putting that fact into the universe so that if I forget who the specific people were that died in the future, is because I don't. It doesn't matter. I like Travis's theory. I think. We have to enter the cards in a certain order. No, uh, I think it's that we need to open the lockers open in a the, certain order. Open the lockers? Yeah. Well, I was thinking in the time clock, but we'll go lockers. Is there, does that, okay, in Dad's spell, does there seem to be any connection to the trap? No, the, time, the cards, time cards. No, the time cards are not trapped at all. There's nothing. Okay. There. There's nothing there. Hmm. Ah, you know what we need are diamonds. What? If we had some diamonds, then we might be able to buy some information from the witch in the forest. 
Because it the, seems like, bar- barring other clues, that would be a fine... I mean, it, it can't have repeating letters, I guess? Because that wouldn't really make much sense. What What time card begins with the letter S? Yeah, there is one that starts with the letter S in the machine. Um, and it's Susanna. Okay, that's the name oh, that's scratched out. Oh, Susanna. That is the name that's scratched out. <laughs> that's yeah. the S name that we're missing. Is there anything written on that card other um, than her name? Nope, it's just one of the miners that quit working here a few months ago. And, and everybody hated her. <laughs> that's <laughs> why they scratched her name out. out. Yeah. Um, the, the only hint I'll give you is think about what you want to do in this situation. Open door. No. Enter. E-L-Z. You know what? What if we just blow up the whole room? Um, I don't think... Yeah, we tried that yeah, once. Yeah, it killed us. It did well, kill no, us. no, no. We go back through. We close your hole. We set it off. Um, we reopen said hole. No? Okay, that's fine. Gotta be, gotta be a way to cheat with magic. <laughs> <laughs> if there's something that makes better podcast audio... Yeah, yeah I would recommend you guys just start... Puddle. Yeah, just try, to, just try shit. Well, if, no, and if you, and if you just did that, Griffin. And if you die, if you die, then you die. But you'll just start right back here. Okay. What do yeah, I but have? It, seemed, it seemed to kind of like <laughs> bum that lady out, prove back that we died again so fast. Yeah, so fast. By the way, what out. time is it? Uh, right now it's probably about eleven fifteen. Okay, okay, I'm okay. gonna uh, put on the lens of straight creeping and see if I can see any pattern. Oh, of steps from from locker to locker. Okay, yeah, here, I'll, um, yeah, okay, how about this? Uh, the, the, the steps are, like, all over this room, like, this was a, tr- a highly trafficked room, but there's one pair that is slightly fresher than the rest, uh-huh. um, and even this pair kind of, like, walks back and forth, like, pa- around these lockers, so much so that you can't tell the exact path that they walked, um, but you can see that they started at the name Dana. That is where the footprints, this fresh, uh, the, this was the first name that these fresh prints of Bel Air's walked to. Dana. Dana. And I can't see where it ended? Yeah, how about that? You can also see that it ends at Neal, and then it walks to the door. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna go open D. Okay, yeah, you pull the lever for Dana, and um, you open it up, and it's empty, and you hear a click. That's great. That's a great start. <laughs> Very good. One down. One down. One I mean, demolition end. has ten letters, but it has I and O in it twice. Are there any other Jake Gyllenhaal movies? Detonation. We- no. So it's D. Mm-hmm. Bop, bop, We're good bop, so bop, far. Bop, hey, you know what? Bop, I'm gonna bop, open. N. I'm gonna open E next. Boom! The room explodes. Okay, <laughs> and All you right. wake up in the white space. And the woman. What does she look like? She. I mean, the same as the last time you were here. It has not been that long since your last visit. We're working on it. Sorry. <laughs> okay, and you're back in the room. So hey, it's not go with A. <laughs> you're di- what? <laughs> hey, you dim bulbs. Hold on. Well, if you're trying to, don't blow <laughs> up. <laughs> so. The last letter is N. Don't yes. blow up. That's, That's ten letters. D O N. So you use the N in the third place. You can't. That set. Uh, uh, do blow Dis- up would work. Disarm. <laughs> disarm. Disarm. Entrance. Okay, it has to end with an N. You got to hang with me here, Clint. Right. And it's only okay. got ten letters, Clinton. Yeah. There. Look. This is what we're working with. And some. There's uh, uh, destruction. Okay, I open you know, I. Okay. I'm really good uh, at this in Fallout 4. You pop, really. I'm assuming you popped open D first. Please, yes, God. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, you pop open D. It is empty. You hear a click. You pop open I. It's empty. You hear a click. Whoa. Okay. okay. D I. Diamond? By the way, you, you didn't pop the open. N. It, these, these lockers don't just have letters on them. You popped open Isaac. Isaac's lock. Isaac. I, I okay. don't care about Isaac. Okay. Um, uh, should we go with S? S? This. Dis- Disarm, di- distract. Dad, why don't you try S? And I'm going to stand back a little bit. Yeah, I okay. lean away. Um, so this is the un- the unreadable scratched-off label that you figured out was Susanna. Susanna. So, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, you pop that one open, and there's a click, and it's empty. Woo! Do you want to go A? Hey, you know Just... what? Let's keep keep these bones a-roll and go for it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, A. I'll pull A. Okay, you pull open Abernathy's locker, and it clicks, and it's empty. Okay. Go, go ahead, Dad. Pull open R. The, 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 oh, I love that you guys are adorable right now. Yeah, you you open it up and you it clicks and it's empty. Okay, all right, I'm in. 
M. Q. <laughs> you click Q. <laughs> no, no. We pull Morrison. Uh, okay, Morrison clicks in attempty. Um, okay, and okay. that's uh, as far as I got. And when that happens, you hear the vault door. Uh, you hear something click got behind. It. You hear something click behind it, but it does not open up. Oh, okay. shit. Okay. No, uh, I, I got it. It's two words Say that it. we we think it's a phrase. I think it's disarm and open. That, are the two that's things what I we just said. Th- Dad said open before you did. Oh, Dad, okay. you have to speak up. <laughs> um, I'm doing my best here to try to highlight your brilliance. All right, do the thing. O. Click, opens. P. Click, it opens, it's empty. E. Click, it opens. We win the trip to the Bahamas. <laughs> N. Uh, it opens and is empty, and when it opens... The vault door starts to swing open, and 16 of the lockers all swing open to reveal uh, cluster bombs uh, wired to the insides of them. We don't touch them. Don't (laughs) touch the bombs. We don't touch the bombs Um, this time. But they very slowly uh, swing open alongside the vault door, um, revealing uh, uh, an entry into the next room. And I just want to say I'm very, very proud of all three of you. Yeah, we did a good job. Were you Although hoping we've got listeners right now that knew it 20 minutes ago. Yeah, that's fine, guys. Keep it to yourselves. <laughs> so the door opens. Can we just stroll on through? Yeah, sure. Okay. It explodes right. and you die. No, I'm just, ki- I'm just kidding. Can we look mm. first? Mm. What? Okay, you yeah, can that, look. That's a good question. Are cluster bombs the only things in the lockers? Yep, that's it. Okay. Hey guys, bad lockers. <laughs> that's not really, what um, lockers don't are you for. feel bad for the people who aren't D I S A who are like, don't keep anything in your lockers you like. <laughs> hey boss, listen, um, I'm gonna bring my lunch for to the office. Mine. I really like to be able to. I told you once. I told you a thousand times. <laughs> Only one thing goes in your locker, and that's cluster bombs. Uh, I know, but the is other there anything in the ice box? Uh, two things. First, sandwich. two two things of note. First of all, um, this trap seems like it was uh, rigged together. Um, like it, it you you don't ins- say hastily because not hastily. No, this took, this obviously took a while, but this is this is not standard mine procedure. This was a trap that was m- laid here, right, for people coming. Okay, into mine. I'm with you, uh, Travis. To answer your question, yeah, there's some meat in the ice box. The ice box is perplexingly still kind of cold. Um, it's not a refrigerator. Like there's actual like ice in it, keeping things cool, and that ice is still like going strong. Um, it's kind of chilly in here, so maybe that has something to do with it. But there's meat, uh, uh, just like raw steaks in the icebox. Um, hey, Taco, is is this magic, this icebox, is it magic in any way? Let me run an uh, arcanum check. Okay. Or arcana, sorry. Arcana. I've been listening to too much. Arkham Asylum. Too much uh, Patrick Rothfuss. Okay. Uh, 15 plus... That's enough. I'll say that the ice, 19. the ice in this 18, box, 18, 18. the ice in this box, and I, I hadn't planned on talking about the the specific type of ice that was in this box, but let's just say it is kind of a magic ice that stays colder for longer, and I'm gonna call it good ice. <laughs> The, Hold on, I'm being swept away by the fantasy tapestry you're weaving. <laughs> this is good ice, and it's kept this old meat, which is how it would show up in your inventory, uh, f- fresh for longer than you thought it would last. Why would a mine keep raw meat? But Well, this is by all means the highest priority mystery we have to solve. Let's, let's roommate on this meat okay. question. I, now, I just want to say that we're going to walk into a room with like a huge slathering beast in it and be like, oh... It was for I mean, uh, like take it or don't, but we don't have to run an unsolved mysteries episode about what kind of meat and where while we have meat. I take the meat and the ice. Thank God, okay. it explodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was on a weight, uh, a weighted trap, uh, and a voice comes okay. out of the box. Not my meat and ice. <laughs> Boom! No, I make you- a bag of sand that looks like it weighs as much as the meat and the ice. <laughs> And then I swap them out. Okay. Now we're going to have to go running down this tunnel while a big-ass rock chases us. <laughs> the door that you opened up uh, opens up into an elevator, which, oh, of course, it does. Me. And uh, it's not it's not, it's not, not upsy, your lifting friend. It's just like a, it's sort of an industrial elevator. It has sort of exposed walls. There's, like, no ceiling on it whatsoever. It's like a freight There's elevator. There's got to be a company logo on it, though, right? They had to have made it. Um, yeah, I mean, it is a – I guess it's part of the um, – the Miller family of products. Nice. Um, 
And uh, yeah, there is a uh, there's a mine cart. Uh, on the side of it with some boxes and then uh, a panel that has an up and down button on it. And uh, as you as you open the uh, elevator sort of lattice, um, you see two small shapes run out from under those the the, the mine cart full of boxes, and they look like little um, furry bugs. Uh, and they have big, adorable ears and a couple little um, uh, black furry wings with white spots. Uh, or no, what? No white spots. Just all, all, just all black fur, and they they scurry out from under the uh, minecart and kind of run up to uh, to your party. Um, well, kind hey of there. Um, Hi, little fur bugs. They make a little tss, 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 noise as oh, they yeah? come up close to you. Is there trouble down in the mines? There is. Now, Griffin, with my animal proficiency, can I understand oh, what they're saying? Um, they no. They appreciate his folksy charm. Uh, <laughs> no, but they offer Could you a... carve f- something for they them? They offer you a free night at the Furry Bug Inn. <laughs> I take it. Um, no, you can't understand what they're saying. This isn't... If I've learned one thing in Los Angeles, it's when you're offered something free, you take you it. You take it, yeah. <laughs> no, they're just kind of... Do you... At you. Do you do you guys want to come with us? Uh, is there anything we need to know? Can you show us anything important? Okay, you're talking to bugs. You are talking to bugs, and they yeah, just he's talking they, to bugs. They just they just zip, zip. can I uh, real quick just point of order because it just struck me. Did we take tacos whole with us? No, that's not how any of this it works. works. It's a okay, I wasn't sure if it was like a you know Roger Rabbit, like you peel the hole back off the wall. No, that'd be incredible though. Okay, well you you boys scurry along. Uh, we're gonna adventure on. Uh, have a great Good day. Good seeing you. Um, Merle, thanks, for, thanks for everything, Merle. One of them scurries up onto your boot, um, Aww. and starts Aww. like climbing up, climbing up your boot a little bit towards your jort purse. What's in your um, jort purse? Which has meat in it. Which um, has the raw meat. Yeah, the in other it. one. The other one follows suit and starts scurrying up the same leg. I hold out the raw meat. Okay, and let him have a little nibble. Okay, they um, they almost completely devour it faster than you could ever imagine. They like jump up onto it and it just kind of disappears. And they run off outside through the hole that Taco made, just zip zip the whole time. Um, but they cool. seem very contented and very happy. And I would, I, if there was a thing like karma points in this game, you would get you would get those. That may be the first, self, the first self... Okay, you get karma points. I don't know what they're going to be used for, but... <laughs> no, that's inspiration. Inspiration? Okay, yeah, I'll give you inspiration. Just for being kind to animals, which is very pan. Very I pan talked to them. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> they didn't understand you, though. Let's go down. Okay. Um, I had a puzzle here, but I think it would probably take too long to get past it. Cool. <laughs> so you did it. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> yeah, tell us. <laughs> So you can't ever use it again. Uh, you had to hit the elevator button in a certain way or else it explodes. Stop me if you've heard this one before. <laughs> hey everybody, this is Griffin McElroy, your best friend your dungeon master, and your local handyman. Stop flushing all that junk down the toilet. This is episode 44 of The Adventure Zone. Thanks for listening to it. Um, I think it's like the third or fourth episode in the 11th hour arc, and boy, our boys are just they are just having fun with all the dying and, uh, and all the, the groundhogs daying and just, just having a, a grand old time, and I hope you are too. This week, The Adventure Zone is sponsored in part by Harry's. Uh, certainly you know about Harry's at this point. They provide German-engineered fly- Five Blade, which is even better than Five Blade. No, it's Five Blade uh, cartridge razors that provide a close, comfortable shave, quality guaranteed. You get a full dang refund if you're not happy. Although that probably won't happen. I bet you're going to like how good these Five Blades feel on your face. The Harry's Truman Starter Set is a great option for new customers, and it's an amazing deal. For just 15 bucks, you get a razor handle, you get moisturizing shave cream, and you get three of Harry's five-blade German-engineered razors. They'll give our listeners five bucks off your first purchase at H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com slash adventure. That's Harry's, H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com slash adventure. Get yourself a nice, close, smooth shave, a delicate, intimate shave. Get intimate. 
with this shave. I also want to tell you about another one of our sponsors this week, Blue Apron. Uh, we talk about Blue Apron all the time on our other shows, um, so I'm glad I have an opportunity to extol their virtues here. It's fucking amazing. Uh, here's how it works. They send you all the ingredients you need to make delicious home-cooked meals uh, for less than just 10 bucks a meal, and you get all these like awesome seasonal recipes to make like really good food. Stuff like sweet chili chicken with Tinkerbell peppers, green beans, and jasmine rice, spice steak and tomato avocado salad with creamy cone cabbage and red onion slaw, or spinach and basil pesto gnocchi with summer squash, green beans, and fresh mozzarella. Like, it's all legit, and it's all so tasty. What did I just make? I made a, like, a roast pork tonight with a, um, like a jasmine green bean rice and a peach salsa. Holy shit. It was so, so good. Um, Blue Apron's legit. It, uh, it taught me how to cook it's it's so good you can check out this week's menu and you can get your first three meals for free with free shipping just go to blueapron.com slash adventure you're gonna love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with blue apron so don't wait go to blueapron.com slash adventure blue apron that's a better way to cook got a personal message here if you want to get a message on the show just go to maximumfun.org slash jumbotron you can find out all the details on how to get a message on the show there this one is for our dm nikolai and then in parentheses, the creator. I'm guessing that's Tyler's brother. That was a fun Tyler the Creator joke, everybody. This message is from Mikhail Rodux, or Rodux, uh, Savina, Geral, and Islude. God, I hope that Geral... I don't know if it'd be funnier if that Geral was named after the Adventure Zone horse or just like this was um, just sort of separate creation. Anyway, they all say to Nikolai, on behalf of all the residents in the world of Sharpie, we would like to wish you a happy birthday. We had boxed up a magic fox to give you, but it kind of exploded. Our bad. Anyway, sorry for ruining all the great plans you had for us over the last few years. We would say we'll do better, but I think we all know that's a lie, especially with the... And unfortunately, the message cut off. Um, but especially with the D&D local tournament coming up, we have to really prove ourselves. I don't know if that's a thing. Is that a thing? competitive D D? maybe i'll be not lazy enough to google it later uh anyway happy birthday nikolai keep up the good work i want to thank everybody who has tweeted about the show using the the zone cast hashtag uh if you do so you might end up as a character uh on on the show we have a couple more npcs in this area that i haven't picked names for yet um so if you want to see your name on the show i just tweet about the show using the the zone cast hashtag we really appreciate that because we also don't advertise the show in any way so Word of mouth is really the only way we have of getting this show in front of new people, and uh, we work really hard on it and are really, really proud of it. So anything you can do to to help spread the word, we really appreciate it. There's a bunch of other shows on the Maximum Fun Network, which we are a proud member of, that I think you're just going to love. Just go to MaximumFun.org and just start clicking. Just start clicking on things. Maybe you'll accidentally click an ad. You'll put like a quarter in my pocket or something. I don't actually know how that works but there's great shows on the network like getting curious and the next generation and the beef and dairy network um a lot of really good shows all at maximumfun.org uh we also have a website called mcelroyshows.com uh and that's got all of the different podcasts and video things that that we do um uh i'm pretty sure it also has all our p.o box information i i just opened up a p.o box here in austin uh, it's P.O. Box 66639, Austin, Texas, 78766. Um, so I know the boys have been getting uh, uh, postcards and stuff like that for a while. If you want to send stuff Austin words, that's how to do it. Um, but go to MacRoyShows.com. You can see all the shows we do, like Schmanners, the show that Travis does with his wife, Teresa, uh, about uh, doing manners good. Uh, or Sawbones, a show that Justin does with his wife, Sydney, about the medical history. Or Rose Buddies, a show I do with my wife, Rachel, where we talk about The Bachelor and Bachelorette television shows. Uh, again, that's MacRoyShows.com. That is it for this week's commercial break. Thank you all again very much for listening. Um, We're actually leaving today to fly to Boston to do our live show tomorrow on the 15th. So, Boston, what's up? We'll see you We'll see you then. Uh, just a reminder, this one's not going to be the next uh, 11th hour episode. It's going to be a little side story. And I think we're going to release it um, later this winter uh, once Travis and I are on paternity leave and need some content to help fill the feed. Um, so, so yeah, it's going to be a fun little weird little side story and I'm excited to do it. Excited to see all these shining, wonderful faces, uh, hang out with some people that have been tweeting with us for like the past like two years now. Um, I'm just so excited. We'll see you then. And, uh, if you're not coming to the show, look for the next episode of the adventure zone on July 28th. See you then. Bye. You 
make your way down, um, and actually horrifyingly, um, on your way down, uh, this is when the earthquake happens. Um, uh, because you're la- th- this is the loop in which you solved the puzzle, and it took you a very long time. Well, not a very long okay. time, but... Um, uh, yeah, so you hit that 1130 point, there's an earthquake, and so just like while you're going down, and this descent takes quite a while, this descent takes probably about five minutes of going down, um, just everything starts shaking, and this freight elevator kind of like bangs off the walls a little bit, um, and at one point it actually drops a few feet, but it doesn't fall all the way, like there's probably some sort of emergency break on it that catches mm-hmm. it, and then uh, after a few seconds of not moving, it continues its descent after the earthquake stops. Another fine Miller product. <laughs> Uh, and you, uh, you, uh, open up, um, and as you, as, as the door opens, you get just a blast of cold air, uh, on your face, the exterior door, not the lattice door to the, to the elevator. Um, and you are in a humongous, uh, cavern. Um, the only light being provided is, well, um, I guess Magnus has his headlamp on. There's an orange light above the elevator door. That's also kind of illuminating things a little bit. Uh, and you can see in front of you is a um, another cart, like a tram, um, that is on a, uh, a a track that is going down into the cavern, uh, and, and and this cavern is going pretty steadily, constantly down. And um, uh, the cart actually has a broken wheel, so it's not exactly on the track. Um, but this is not like a mine cart for moving for moving minerals. This is like a personnel cart for getting people like deeper into the mine much faster but it is uh currently broken and um you can see actually some cracks in the ceiling um that some dust is falling from like these these cracks were just sort of hewn into the stone um with the earthquake and there is a a sort of a faint uh constant buzzing noise happening in this room which despite the fact that you have these two lights in it is kind of uh is, is still very very uh dark how broken is it? Is it uh, like a wooden wheel? It's just like, something I can fix. No, it's like a metal. It's a, it is a metal wheel that is broken. That's not to say you can't fix it, but it's like the metal is broken. Is the buzzing like sound like insects? Uh, maybe a nature check would reveal that to those who want to roll a nature check. I'm going to do a nature check. You know who would probably be nature. very good at a nature check? Yeah, not me. I got an eight. You can't. You you really can't tell. Seven. But you got plus. pluses. You got a plus. I do have a plus. Dad's always looking at his cards. Yeah, I'm planning so, ahead. For what? You have no fucking clue what's happening. I have a great idea. <laughs> okay. Right, pal. Nature check. Uh, okay, so it's 11. Okay, uh, yeah, with an 11, you can tell the just sort of by the fluctuations in the noise that whatever is making it is alive. I have a spell called Mending. Oh. That allows you to fix things. Metal, stone, and I know you're looking it up right now. No, I trust you. Um, here's a fun fact. That spell is actually baked into the Arclight Spanner, your your weapon that you got from Hurley during the battle wagon races. Why don't you two go investigate, and I'll fix the wheel on the cart. Daddy, fix the wheel. <laughs> All right. uh, that sounds pretty good. I think we're in okay shape right now, and if we die, no big whoop. Okay, yeah. Uh, Merle, you get hey, to what work. what would happen if one of us died? Um, I don't know. I guess well, everybody would just deal. That's with the key to the mystery. Oh, Dad, please. Oh, that's the uh, key to the mystery. Sorry, my microphone's already broken and exploded into a million pieces <laughs> like a fucking gizmo. <laughs> I mend it with my <laughs> spanner. Blather and blather, Scott's dad. You exploded my mic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to move forward, Merle. Keep uh, your stone y- of far speech on. <laughs> yeah, Merle is Merle's working on the wheel. It's going to take him a, 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 a couple minutes. Um, but the, the pieces of the wheel, it shattered into like four pieces, start to float through the air and start to fuse together. And it's almost like some sort of invisible force is welding it as sparks come flying out of your wrench. Um, okay, Magnus and Taco, what are you guys doing? You got about, um, the, the light from the elevator gives you about, uh, about like a 20 foot radius circle, uh, into this cavern and the, uh, and, and you got the tracks going right in front of you and Merle's behind you working on the cart. What time is it? Uh, I mean, by now it's about probably eleven thirty-five. All right, okay. I'm gonna go to uh, look down the path. I guess look down the track, see if there's been any damage, any cave-in, anything like that. Investigation. Yeah, sure. That yeah, sounds good. I'll run, run too. Just... 
case. Oh, I didn't find I got a shit. 13. Nothing. So a 13. Okay. Um, no, it seems like the tracks are pretty clear. Taco, what'd you roll? Uh, a three. I'll be lucky okay. to find my own asshole. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you, you move around your cheeks for a bit, and you're like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> um, you, you done transmuted it shut again. Damn it. Um, Merle, Magnus, with that check, actually, and because you have the headlamp, you can actually tell there's no, like, big rocks or anything blocking the path. Um, but as you move your light around... Um, this tunnel, uh, and, and specifically like around the floor, checking to make sure that the tracks are okay. Um, it almost looks like you're, there's like, s- like smoke on the ground and, and all around. And as you like shine your headlamp into the smoke, like it kind of parts for you a little bit, um, re- revealing the track underneath. Cool. Hey, Taco. You yeah. see this? I know you're looking for your butthole. What? I don't understand your voice. Why do you sound like a yeah, I, I know you're looking. McRoy? I know you're looking for your butthole. Um, what is the is the uh, is it, this smoke seems unnatural? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, touch it. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll uh, I'll cast detect magic. See what we got going down here. Okay, <laughs> and he does. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any magic. This, this, that just that this. just handed me. The tech magic while I was searching for it, as if to reinforce that his card sorting system is better than mine, <laughs> which it most certainly is. Um, yes, it is. No, <laughs> it is. I, I mean, I'll simplify it. There's, there's no, there's no like magic that you can, uh, except for the mending spell that's happening right behind you. You don't, you don't pick up on anything. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Okay, sounds good. Uh, at this point, the cart has been fixed. Oh, great! Another cool. great adventure, Magnus. Yeah, we did it. I think we solved the weird smug puzzle. I have a okay. This is an interesting D and D conundrum. I, okay. Travis McRoy, have a suspicion and something I would test out, but I don't think Magnus would. So, like, I'm just gonna move forward yeah, and not do sp- it. Spec the fiction, bro. Yeah. So, like, let's get in the cart and let's go. Yeah. Let's okay. do it. Merle, you down? Yeah. Do we know how to operate? The uh, yeah. There's a there's a lever that seems to have three settings. Right now, it's in the middle. Um, but there's one to like go back and one to go forward. Okay, I'll come catch up to you guys. Aren't you a little bit ahead of me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Merle, I get in. Merle goes right that the... lever. Yeah. Sure. Toot toot. Ting ting. Ticket 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 ticket. Okay. Um, I, I will say that when when Magnus gets in, he kind of holds his shield kind of over his head like a like okay. an umbrella a little bit. Okay. Um, and you're just moving moving on down the cave. I'm gonna yeah. call this my magic trolley. Okay. <laughs> I want to open the Umbra staff. <laughs> okay. Put it above my head, too. Just um, let, this let is... Merle really wonder what's going on. Do, 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 do. Okay, you move uh, uh, away from the entrance, away from that orange light above the uh, elevator door. And this is going to be a fun, like, dragons, uh, dragon slayer style death. We're just like, uh, like in a cartoon, like just something uh, happens to you, and then all of a sudden it's just skeletons standing there holding the umbrella and the shield, and somebody like whistling while they move a lever. Um, because all three of you are uh, almost instantly devoured by something as soon as Got you it. leave the light. By the Vashta Narada. And you're back in the white space, and okay. same deal, just kind of exhausted, and you're back in front of You're okay. back in front now, of Hall, as well. Hall thrower, done. Yep. Get we in, know the code. Uh, we yeah, know the code. You do the puzzle, uh, and let's actually, to, to further spec that fiction, you pop that code in pretty quickly this time, right? And you go down, you have your little interaction with the... the, the the dark bugs, and then you go down the well, elevator. No, no, not necessarily. Because okay. I don't. I don't know that we want to. I wonder if the meat would be more useful if, like, we didn't offer it to them. Like, do we need to do that? I. Uh, I guess not. But that got inspiration out of it, and it seemed to make them happy. It's true. Okay. I did get karma out of it. Okay. Uh, um, and but my my point was, you did that so much faster that you. Um, probably made it down the the elevator before this earthquake happened, um, okay. right? Like before eleven thirty. And now, when you sure. get to the bottom, um, the the scene's the same. The the cart is broken, um, but you don't hear buzzing, and there aren't no there there aren't no cracks in the ceiling. Um, you do just hear the okay, you you hear like so you can you can hear some stuff in there, but it's not like. It doesn't sound like whatever it is, there's not billions of them. Is there still smoke 
covering the tracks. And stuff. Yeah, I mean, when you investigate, you don't see smoke. You just see, um, like, you see a handful of those little bugs. And they, they run away from the light as soon as you shine it on them. Griffin? Yo. Do our spell slots reset? They do. Every time? Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. Okay. Uh, what do you want to do? But it's a, let's say at this point you can get down here. The fastest you can get down here is like eleven fifteen. Okay. Well, then, oh, that's actually eleven twenty. Yeah, that'll be good. You guys got like spells that do light, right? That make things glow. That's actually what I was looking for. I thought I did. I mean, my magic eyes can see in the dark. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is, if light seems to drive these things away, why yeah, not make not... like the cart glow? Yeah. That's not a. Bad. I have a spell called light. That's I touch a fucking one object. really efficiently named spell. Yeah, yeah, and the object sheds bright light in a twenty foot radius. I'll cast it on the cart. Okay, I cast it on the cart. And are you repairing Skadoosh. it? Are you repairing it as well? Yeah, it's not going to go anywhere till I fix it. Okay. Uh, yeah, you repair this cart and you make it super duper shiny. You have repaired the cart and it's about eleven twenty five. Let's move. Let's go. All right. That's bust ass. Yeah, you, you hop in the cart and um, begin Do-do-do. moving down the track. And, and sure enough, you can see these little bugs like scattering as you move down the path, and they are giving your cart a wide berth. You are uh, curving around to the left. Uh, a ways, there's kind of like a... Um, uh, after you've been going for a few minutes, there's like a hairpin turn. Not exactly a hairpin turn, but like you are turning almost 180 degrees to the left, and then you're just going down and down and down this cart for down this path for a super long time. So we passed the point where we got devoured. And well, it's at 11:30, um, just just past that hairpin turn, there is that earthquake, and then sure enough, cracks in the ceiling start opening up, and. Some shapes, those, those, those uh, thousands and thousands of those little bugs start crawling out of it, and I'm gonna say maybe a few of them land. Let's say maybe like uh, I've got my shield over my head. Thank okay, you very much. You got a few. Okay, so you're protecting your your dome. I guess you did establish that in the last. You, and you're protecting yourself. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> oh, uh, what do you want me to do? Grow my shield us. bigger? Uh, How? <laughs> Let's say let's just say that like some bugs are about to fall into your cart. How would you deal with that? Well, I I can only speak for myself. I'm holding my shield over my okay. head. I say we try to like kill them. Okay, we haven't killed anything like for five episodes. That's a good point. Kill the some bugs. Sh- kill the bugs. Are the bugs? Well, obviously my good karma isn't working. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I'm I'm having a hard time thinking of any other way to to defend us. I'm sure there's some magic that I could. Well, you've got yes, your umbrella. But... We could just like keep them off us, you know. The bugs yeah, are the I... bug. I don't know if I describe them accurately enough. They're very cute. Aww. Aww, but they did eat us. They did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're cute. Okay, hold on. You guys have spent five minutes trying to figure out how to kill some bugs. They're gonna eat us. I'm just saying. And you real said life, they're cute. Real life, Griffin could have done this in uh, like ten seconds, man. To be fair, Griffin, this is your fault because you put us in the mindset of solving puzzles. And that's tracks. a good point. Fair enough. How do we know they'll bother us? I, I thought light chased him away, and aren't we still surrounded by a nimbus of light in this trolley? Um, yeah, but there's a few that are like in the cart with you, and they don't know how to get out, and they're like freaking out, and they're starting to like nip at your boots. Oh, I thought I hit falling. one with my war hammer. Hold on. I thought they were falling from the ceiling. They're already in the cart with us? Yeah, they, like, fell from the ceiling into the oh, cart. Oh, stomp, 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 stomp. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can just stomp them. That's that's fair. Uh, it's gross. <laughs> it's gross, and it's horrible. Um, kind of anticlimactic, though, isn't it? Maybe a bit, but sometimes the easiest solution's the best one. Well, the, that's true. The stompiest. Um, okay, you, you, you go down this path. And uh, it's it's a, a again like a long cart ride. This mine um, they had dug like a lot out, and and as you go down the path, uh, the bugs are still giving you a pretty wide berth, um, and you can see like some other sort of uh, passageways that don't have tracks coming out them, sort of uh, uh, branching off to the left and right, and then just like deep deep holes going down from those. Um, and uh, so so this was like the main vein of this mine. Uh, not vain like mother load, but like where where people would move down. It's it, it was a pretty long journey. It took you about fifteen minutes to go down, okay. so you don't have a ton of time. But you you've made it to the end of this tramway, uh, and you've pulled in fr- in front of another door with another orange light on top of it that is keeping all these bugs at bay. Um, mm. And uh, this door just has a button on it uh, that says open, 
And that's pretty much it. Yeah? Yeah. Do you want to... Well, I mean... Uh, I, all this time, to... Magnus is slowly just pushing his finger towards it. <laughs> Mer- Merle, do you want to try to detect it, l- search it for traps? I cast find traps again. Um, okay, the door is not trapped. You can tell that. I push um, it. Okay. Plip. <laughs> um, there is something behind the door that is trapped. Damn it. But you, you did not activate it. Um, you, you press it and you hear um, the sound of uh, the sound of machinery um, moving far beyond the door. Um, and then you hear silence, like nothing happens for a while. And then um, uh, after about a minute, your door starts to slide open and it takes it a real long time. It takes it like 30 seconds for it to completely open up. And then inside is a very, very, very small room. Um, it's kind of reminiscent, actually, of the airlocks from the Crystal Kingdom stuff. Um, and you just see another door inside with an open button. And then on the back side of the door that you just came through is another open button. Um, so there's a there's a button on either side of this door you come through. And then there's another door on the opposite side that has uh, an open button on it. And is, are there windows or anything? Any kind of No, there's hole? no windows. There's no way to see through it. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay. Um, you punch the open button um, uh, on the other door, and the one that you came through begins its slow cycle again of shutting. Um, and once it does, this you, is a bug thing. You this is to keep the bugs out. Uh, it, it, the door shuts. You hear it, and then um, on uh, there's a wall um, to to your right when you came in, and um, a panel on this wall opens up, and you see a clock. And this clock is a 60-second timer, and it's counting down. And uh, underneath the clock, immediately underneath the clock, is a another small metal panel that has, like, a slot in it. Almost looks like a, like a key card slot at a hotel. Um, and uh, that's, that's what you see. And the, the, the clock is counting down from 60. What's it at right now? Oh, it just started 60? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, we're not going to move it in real time. This is the trap from the elevator, isn't it? No, this is a different one. Oh, okay. Right. There's like a slot, you say. Yeah. Slot like a key card slot. Is it something I could use my thieves tools on and pick and disarm? Um, if you want to use wires? If you want to use your th- No, there's no exposed wires. If you want to use your thieves tools to see what you can do, um, you can do that. Is everybody Well, bye everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, been a, I, it's been a good life. I do that. Okay. Wee! I mean, that's a 12 plus 10, so 22. I put my hands up in the air like Superman, because <laughs> I know you're ready to go to heaven. <laughs> I mean, I rolled a 22. Okay, with a 22, um, you realize that there are some very, very, very small screws on the corners of this key card panel, um, and you screw them off, and uh, you have exposed, after removing this panel, um, you, you can still see this key card slot, like right in the center of things, but this center... Uh, is surrounded by five wires. Um, and there's uh, a red, a yellow, a blue, a green, and a black wire. I cut the green wire. Wait a minute! <laughs> what, what do you know? Hold on. Uh, Real quick, Dad, uh, wait, if you want to share with me how blue, you know which... Green. What's the other color? Red, yellow, blue, green. Black. black. Um, black. I'm going to just take... I mean, canonically, Magnus did say it. So you do <sighs> have a trip to heaven, um, and Wee. we can just hop right back into the room. 60 seconds on the clock, what do you do? I've eliminated one option. <laughs> I'm not going to do it like this. Um, let's think about what we know for 60 seconds. <laughs> hmm. Red, yellow, blue, green. Black. Well, they always say cut the red wire. Isn't that, isn't that what it was in Speed? What, was it Speed, the red wire? Um, the... What is it in the M&M's movie trailer? I cut the black wire. wire. To heaven we're going <laughs> on a trip together. Wait, you just, me Wait, and you just my cut the same wire. You cut the no. same fucking wire again. No, no you, I did green, the green. you did green last time. But both have killed you. Okay. Well, so are we back there with this timer at 60? There's got to be a better way to figure can, this out. So, so it can be. Um, so there's a, there's a couple ways to solve this one, and that's all I'll tell you. Um, okay. But if you don't want to be in this room and you want to be in an earlier place, you let me know. Ah, ah, what? The time cards. You really are into those, huh? Well, he just said there's a slot, a, a small metal slot. He didn't oh. say what you had to insert was metal. Okay. Get, uh, so get, um, 
I don't know. You want to go to Cassidy's? Well, if we're already there, hold on. I- I'll get us out of here. I used Rail Splitter to cut all five wires at once. <laughs> you are in heaven. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. No, you're back in the. You're back in that that entry room. Um, I forget the exact names that I laid out for you that there are cards for. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> Cassidy's was a, a, uh, among them. The four people that uh, uh, died in the accident are among them. Um, uh, Neal, I think, is one of them. Terrence is one of them. Isaac is one of them. Uh, Quincy is one of them. Hey, you know what? We should get Isaacs. He's the sheriff now, and it seems like maybe he would be a high-ranking person that would have access, right? Does that make sense? Does indeed. Okay, let's grab uh, all of them. <laughs> there <laughs> we go. We <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and we'll think about it on we'll our long about trip it on down. The way down. Okay. Um, um, if this is the case, this time I want to use my shield to kind of like keep bugs from getting in our cart, so I don't have to squish any adorable bugs. Okay, you don't you don't kill any bugs this loop, um, and you make it to the end, and you make it in the room. Sixty seconds on the clock, and how much time on all together? What time is it right now? Um, the, I mean, the fastest you could probably get here is uh, the fastest you could get here is like eleven fifty. So it's, <sighs> okay. if someone's been building traps, and the only one I'm to survive the cave in. If the only one to survive the cave-in was Cassidy, maybe Cassidy put in the traps, and we should use her card. Does that stand to reason? Well, but Isaac survived. Yeah. Well, that's assuming yeah. that it's the same Isaac. There could be more than one Isaac in the world. Chris Isaac? Uh, Griffin wouldn't do that. Let's, uh, why don't you... I like... I. You agree with Travis or me? Isaac or Cassidy, Dad? <sighs> I'll let Dad pick. <laughs> Isaac. Okay. You put Isaac's punch card in, and the clock stops. And you hear that sound again, and the door in front of you slowly starts to open. Nice. You're not mad at me, are you, Trav, that I picked Isaac over Cassidy? No, not that. I don't give two shits. Well, you were right. Um, the, uh, the panel snaps shut as the door on the far end starts to open up, and after completing its long cycle uh, uh, of opening, you reach... The largest room you've encountered in this mine so far. It's a big circular room, about 300 feet in diameter. And the first thing that catches your eye is the hole in the floor. There is a, a guardrail around this hole, um, but beyond that rail is just this, this gargantuan chasm that runs nearly the whole span of the room. There's only about 10 feet of walkway uh, lined with cart tra- tracks going around the room. Uh, and the rest of the room is just all hole, baby. Um, there is a, a thick metal ring running uh, along the exterior of the hole, and you could see some like thick, like really, really, really thick ridged metal poking out of either end of that ring. So it kind of looks like a, a, a really sturdy metal hatch that is currently open. And there's a sign hanging on the, uh, the railing directly in front of you, and it's labeled Shaft A. And uh, next to that sign is some sort of control. Are you sure it's not Shafta? It could be Shafta. Um, <laughs> no, it's Shaft A. And next to that sign is a, a control box with a, a long lever coming out of it. Uh, and there's a, another really important thing that you notice about this hole, and that is that there is some kind of force field in it. And it's just below that, that heavy metal hatch. Um, and it looks kind of similar to the bubble that is surrounding Refuge. Um it is it's more translucent you can you can uh, see through it it's not like refracting light um but 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 there's this force field um in inside of the hole it's it's kind of uh wavy um and it it pitches outward a bit giving it kind of a similar shape to the bubble around town but you notice there are actually a total of three of these bubbles in the room there's this one inside the pit there's a much much smaller bubble on the ceiling that a faint light is actually shining down from through a hole that is maybe only just like three feet wide. It's a it's a much, much, much smaller hole immediately on the ceiling. The ceiling is way high up, um, probably about 20 feet, 20, 30 feet up. Um, and there's a small hole with another bubble around it, and there's light coming down through this hole. There's a, there's a bubble around that hole that's that's uh, just a bit uh, wider than the, the uh, diameter of the hole. And then there's a third bubble, and it's surrounding the only other door in this room on the opposite end of the pit that you're currently standing over. And that, that door looks identical to the one that you just came through, except that it has this big bubble force field around it. And actually from far above you, you can faintly hear the sounds of commotion, and of distant screams. Bye-bye. See ya! Nope. 
It's only about 11.55 right now. Uh, well, it's late, but um, the world hasn't exploded. You just hear... Uh, um, you hear some you hear some commotion and actually because you've done this so many times now it sounds like the the commotion of people rushing to try to put out the bank Are, does it sound like we're like directly below it um not directly below it but you you can hear it and you're below it i listen i know that there's an uh, i know our impulse is usually to act but i think we would be best served to just chill and see yeah, what let's happens watch. see what happens Okay. Can we can can we see through the force field bubble? You can, yeah. That heads down. Yes. I I suspect that this is a case of like they dug too deep and hit something they weren't supposed to and that kind of thing. Well, or let's, somebody. Let's find out. Um Okay, you wait around a couple minutes and you guys want any of this ice? <laughs> You're just oh. chewing on ice? That ice is well, too good to waste. I gave the the meat to those bugs. Um through that hole in the floor, I forget who asked if you could see through it and see down it. Yes, it was me. Uh, okay. Um, through that hole in the floor, you can see, um, shining through the darkness, teeth. You can see thousands of them arranged in, in countless rows that are pouring down a mouth that is easily 200 feet wide. And emerging uh, from that mouth are two big rectangular flaps that are also lined with teeth that are curling uh, and, and dripping with malice. And that mouth is lit ever so slightly from within with dozens of small flames uh, that look kind of like pilot lights for a furnace that looks like it's about to explode. And with the help of the light shining directly downward, you can see what owns that mouth. And it is a gigantic body that is, uh, ha- has a thick skin, thick ridged purple skin. And this is a body that is halted mid-attack, that is moving now, almost imperceptibly, but it is moving a bit. And the fires inside of its mouth are starting to, uh, to, to grow and become um, alive. And it is pushing with enough force to give this force field uh, apparently like a, a workout because waves are starting to ripple across the, the surface of it uh, almost in a panic. And from above you, you hear the chime of a clock. I throw the p- cluster bomb down. Uh, okay, you throw the, the cluster bomb. Uh, I like that play. Um, all of you, all, all three of you, because you got a good chuck in, uh, you're not like right next to the blast, but all of you take like 24 damage uh, and are knocked backwards um and uh it doesn't seem to have any any effect on this thing. Wait, did it go through the force field? It didn't. No, it just kind of bounced off the 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 top of it. Actually some th- this thing was just about to breach it, so like it maybe hit it, but even if it did, it didn't seem to stop it at all cuz this thing is 200 feet wide um and is essentially um a a, a weapon of mass destruction. And now that uh, you you sort of work your way back towards the hole after being blown away back from it, and the movement that this thing has is now like no longer imperceptible. You can see it moving. It's coming up through the hole. Uh, it's it's moving upward a few inches and then a few feet. And the flames in its mouth are expanding and intensifying. Um, can we hold hands, guys? Can we all hold hands? And all of you yeah, hold fine. hands as both the flame and the purple worm uh, <laughs> burst through the bubble. Um, the the force field uh, ultimately giving up the ghost. And the room is flooded with fire, and uh, you are destroyed by a blast of nearly supersonic force. And uh, the last thing you hear is a scream of unbridled fury, and you do not live long enough to hear the twelfth chime of the clock above you. Well, <laughs> okay. So just I, I just want to throw this out because the audience and Griffin's probably already cut this, but just for Dad and Justin, remember we fought like some purple worms at the very beginning of the thing. Yep. Before we entered the thing, this is probably connected. This to that, one is right? much, 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 much larger than those. Got it. Yeah, but we beat them, so I like our odds. <laughs> Actually, we just chased them off. We chased them off. That's right, Dad. Thank you for the reminder. Okay, I feel less good <laughs> about the odds. <laughs>
MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hey guys, this is Adam Conover. You may know me from my true TV show, Adam Ruins Everything. Well, guess what? Now we're doing a podcast version right here on Maximum Fun. What we do is we take all the interesting, fascinating experts that we talk to for just a couple minutes on the show, and we sit with them for an entire podcast, really going deep and getting into the fascinating details of their work. Find Adam Ruins Everything wherever you get your podcasts or at MaximumFun.org. Maximum Fun.